Well, hey, welcome back, everybody. We're in chapter four, Sefer Yoshua. Thanks for being with us. Chapter four basically is a continuation from chapter three. The Jewish people entering into the Jordan miraculously, the waters open up for them. They cross over and enter into the land of Eretz Israel. The chapter opens up and tells us. It was when the nation had completely passed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for you twelve men from the people, every man from a tribe. So we have twelve representatives over here. And what will these people be doing? Command them, saying, Take for yourselves here out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and you should carry them over with you, and leave them in a lodging place where you shall lodge this night. So Yeshua called over the representatives of the Jewish people, these 12 people who were already pre-picked, and he brings them over. And exactly where the uh, ark stood in the midst of the Jordan while everybody crossed over underneath the feet of the Kohanim while they were holding the ark, they took over there from, from, from underneath their feet 12 stones, 12 boulders. They carried them over, and these would represent the miracle. This may be a sign amongst you. When the children ask in the time to come, saying, What are these stones? You shall say to them that when the waters of the Jordan were cut before the, the ark, the covenant of the God, had passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So this will be a, a memorial, so to speak. Yeshua will place these stones, the text tells us, in the lodging place when the Jews cross over, the first night when they stay. And this will be a memorial, continuous memorial, some type of museum for generations to come. And people could see the might of God, because obviously this generation will pay us on. And the children will ask, what are these stones? What's this monument over here? And, the, and then they will be able to tell them, these are the stones which were taken from the, from the midst of the Jordan, where God cut the, uh, the, the, the waters in order to allow the Jewish people into the land of Eretz Israel. Children of Israel did as Joshua commanded, took from them 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan. As the Lord spoke to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes, carried them over. And Yeshua set up the 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Tabernacle stood. So here we have an interesting thing, which wasn't something, we don't see a, a, a specific command for this by God, but Yeshua takes an additional 12 stones outside of the Jordan and places them instead of these 12 stones. There's a couple of, uh, of comments about this, exactly why he did this. Maybe because the 12 stones which were removed from the Jordan, so now the priest was standing in mud because they removed these stones from underneath their feet and he replaced them with these other stones. Or what I think is that he set them up also on the bank of uh, the Jordan as another memorial for the Jewish people to always remember this miracle, just as he was commanded to take these 12 stones from midst of the Jordan and to bring them out to the camping ground where the Jews are going to camp later on. In order for it to be a memorial, some type of museum where people could always see these and to remember the great miracle that God did for the Jewish people, so too he also set up some type of memorial with these 12 stones which were taken outside of the Jordan replaced with these 12 stones in order for everybody to see these 12 stones also and to remember the exact site where this miracle took place, meaning that you could have the memorial in the camping grounds, which is obviously not in the Jordan, but you will also have another site over here to see the exact location where the waters were split and Jewish people crossed over. So this is what Yeshua does over here. And the priests that bore the Ark of the Stones uh, in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished as the Lord commanded Yeshua to speak to the people according to all that Moshe commanded Yeshua and the peace of haste and crossed over. Rashi tells us over here. <clears throat> something that we saw last week, and I'm just going to re review it because of the importance of this message. Rashi states, They were still standing in the bed, in the riverbed of the Jordan. Jo uh, Yoshua said to them, He stopped them in the midst of the riverbed. He made them stand between the two poles of the ark. And he said to them, Know for which purpose you are crossing over the Jordan. The condition that you are crossing over the Jordan is to remove the seven nations that live amongst you. Because obviously, without that clause over here, it would be impossible for the Jewish people to exist in the land of Eretz Israel. Now we have an interesting thing over here is that when all the people had completely passed over, then the, the ark of the law of the Lord passed over and the priests in the presence of the people and the children of Reuven and God and half tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel. Rashi tells us over here that you have this situation. The people passed over into Eretz Canaan, into the land of Eretz Canaan, the western side of the, uh, of the Jordan. And the priest holding the ark was still inside the midst of the water. Now it seems that they went back to the eastern side of the banks of the river Jordan. 
So on one hand you had, and as they went back and the Ark was removed from the Jordan, the waters started to once again flow down the river Jordan. So you had on one side, on the western hand, on the western bank you had the entire Jewish people, and on the eastern bank you had the priests carrying the Ark. So you had this situation over here. Now what, what is going to happen? How are these people, how are the priests now going to pass over and get to the people over here? So it says that the ark and its bearers are found on one side, and all of Israel is found on the other side. In chapter uh, in sentence 16 over here, Rashi tells us that a miracle occurred, and the ark lifted up its bearers and passed over. It actually, they, they lifted up uh, uh, on, on air, so to speak, or you could say they were walking on water, and they crossed over the Jordan, they flew over the Jordan, and they met up with the rest of the Jewish people. So this was, a, so to speak, a miracle inside another miracle, which was just incredible. And now the text tells us about the 40,000 armed warriors from the uh, two and a half tribes who, if you recall, this was their condition that they could have the eastern bank of the Jordan if they send their men to battle first in the western side until that area is conquered. So they send over 40,000 armed men to do battle. And on that day, the Lord made Yeshua great in the sights of all of Israel, and they all feared him, as in the days of Moshe. And the Lord said to Yeshua, said, commanding the priests of the ark, and the testament that came up to the Jordan, Jordan commanded, and, and Yeshua commanded the priests, saying, come out of the Jordan. And what is when the priests uh, bear the ark of the covenant and came out of the midst of the Jordan, as soon as the sole of the priests, feet were, 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 were lifted to the dry land. This is what we saw before, that they were actually lifted up in the air and brought over to the other side of the Jordan. The people came up, and this was in the this was in the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped in Gilgal. Gilgal will be the first encampment for the Jewish people, which they stayed there for the entire fourteen years or seven years of conquering the land of Eretz Israel and the seven years of the division of Eretz Israel. For those fourteen years, the Ark and the Kohanim and the priests and the and the sacrifices were going on in the encampment in Gilgal, on the eastern border of Jericho. And the 12 stones now were taken up. These 12 stones, which we talked about previously, which were taken uh, under the Jordan itself, when the miracle occurred, they were now taken up, taken up, and they were placed and they were set up in Gilgal. And he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children uh, ask their fathers to come, what are these stones? Then you shall say, you shall let the children know, saying, Israel came over the Jordan to dry on dry land, and the Lord your God had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before you, and they passed over. And the Lord your God did to the Reed Sea, he dried it up also, the Jordan. And all the people of the earth might know the power of the Lord. So these are things that, that are obviously supernatural miracles that occurred in order to remember us the power of the Kedush Baruch Hu, of God's ultimate power. These 12 stones, stones are going to be set up permanently in Gilgal for all to see, for all generations, for everyone to point out. These are the stones. God did a, a, a miracle, uh, not inside the, the, the nature of of things in this world. Now, once we have this symbol, so to speak, over here, this ark, Rabbi Kahana writes, the ark took control of the laws of nature. When it carried, it carries. It's demonstrating to Israel the laws of faith and trust. Now, there was a lot of things about this ark. We've mentioned a few of them in the last, uh, in our last class, in chapter three. First of all, that everybody was able to stand between the poles of the ark, something that's obviously impossible in such a sh short area that two to three million people could stand over there. We also mentioned that the ark inside the Holy of Holies took up actually no place. There's another thing about the ark, which uh, we don't find by any other vessel in the use of the tabernacle of the base of Megdash, and that is that the poles constantly remained inside the rings meaning you had these long poles, and obviously the poles were used when you had to carry the ark, just like the other items, like the altar and the menorah, which were also carried, either by the, Le by the Levites or by the Kohanim. You had special poles to carry them, but once you were set up in a camp, once you were set up the tabernacle, you obviously removed the poles, but not the ark. No, the ark's poles continuously stayed where they were on a permanent basis over there. And there's a reason for that. God is telling us over here that the poles, which, by the way, is called in Hebrew, badim, which is a strange word for poles, because poles usually should have a different name, but the word badim comes from lavad, badad. So God is alone. God's power is alone. Just like he could carry the carriers of the ark, 
and just as all the Jewish people could, could fit inside the ark, he is Akol Yachol. He could do everything and master of this world. Now, the rabbis teach us that the poles were so long that the ends of the, po the poles were seen from the holy place because the ark, as we know, was placed inside the Holy of Holies. But the poles were so, far, were so long that they would actually uh, be pushed out from the Holy of Holies into the sanctuary where everybody who is looking through the doors would be able to see this. An interesting aspect over that is that when the Jews would come up to the base of Migdash, and especially the three times of a year when they were obligated to come up during Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, the holidays, they would see the doors open in the base of Migdash and uh, the poles sticking out, so to speak, from the curtain of the Holy of Holies. This would remind them of this very important lesson that Kedush Baruch Hu is in charge. He is a kol yachol. He could do everything. And the poles represented this for all time. That's the beauty that we have over here. Rabbi Kana writes, the point of the Talmud is that God wished every Jew who came to the sanctuary to always see the poles and remember what they symbolized. That we are obligated to have perfect, complete faith in God. And that's why everybody who came out to the base of Mikdash would be able to see the, the poles sticking out from the Holy of Holies into the sanctuary itself. So, We've seen over here that the Jews have now crossed over the Jordan. They've taken out these stones as a memorial uh, for all time to show God's greatness. So people should have faith in Kadesh Baruch Hu continuously, even later generations who really didn't take part of this, uh, this episode of crossing over the Jordan. They would eventually, these, these stones would eventually be placed in Gilgal, the first encampment of the Jewish people. And from here, we go on to the conquering and the setting up and the preparations for the conquering of the land of Eretz Yisroel. I'm Levi Chazan. I want to thank you for being with us today on this very, very beautiful day. Chapter 4, Sefer Yoshua.